Hello friends, welcome to a new 3DS Max tutorial. This is Gökçe from CGK.com and today we are going to uh, watch the second part of our tips, 3DS Max tips tutorials. And today I want to show you the selection sets and the select and place tool in 3DS Max, which we haven't taught uh, in the previous lessons. Uh, both of these are somewhat useful. I guess select and place is very useful, but the selection sets are somewhat useful to you. Uh, I guess you not rarely, but mm, not frequently either, uh, will need to use them. But once you need them, they will be very, very useful. So uh, let me show what they are. And today I'm also using the scene uh, that we have used before, the uh, scene uh, that is included in the sample files, Mac 3ds Max sample files. I've shown you how to download this before. And the uh, same, you can use the same scene uh, in here as well. If you haven't seen this, uh, this is, you can just Google for 3ds Max sample scenes online and uh, download the one you found. And in there, let me show that again. Um, before I've shown you the uh, website as well, but for this lesson, I'm not going to. And you can find the address in here, okay? 3ds Max sample files, scenes, design, visualization, and interior scene. And this is the one we are going for. Actually, they're all the same, so no problem there. Okay, so uh, what selection sets are is, it's a, uh, an alternative way to select objects, um, but also grouping them uh, with a selection set. Uh, it's not like the regular group because uh, once you click, you only select that object. It doesn't just uh, join or merge uh, uh, objects together. But what it does is you, there is a list in here, as you can see, and uh, you can just click from here and select the all previously named selection sets. Let me show you an example and uh, I guess it will be much clearer. Uh, let's select the chairs, for example. There are three chairs in the scene. And let's go here and type in chairs. And once you do that, there will be a chairs selection in here. And if you click there, uh, the chairs will be selected. Now, what is here that is different than uh, the grouping option? Um, group actually is a little bit tedious to work with because it really groups everything together. Let's say we want to move this chair separately. Every time we need to uh, do that, we need to select uh, this group. We need to go to group, uh, open, and then select them individually and move them around. But uh, in, with selection sets, you can see that is, they are not selected together. They, you can select them separately and also just click here and select all of them together. And also what I uh, feel is uh, having this option separate in here is really cool because it's um, isolated from the scene. It's not in the scene. So uh, wherever your camera is, let's say we are here, for example, you can just go ahead and just do this and the chairs are selected. And maybe you don't only want to move them, but you want to change a property, for example, and they're not visible in your scene. And then you can just select them from here and just right click, go to object properties or whatever you want to do. Uh, with them. So this is very neat and uh, useful tool. Uh, another tip uh, to work uh, in complex scenes. And the second thing I want to show you is the uh, th this I use a lot and I really love it. And uh, this is relatively new in 3ds Max. So uh, old Max users don't um, usually have a tendency to use this. Me, me too, by the way. But uh, whenever I remember it, I always use it. And please don't forget it. I really, it really saves a lot of time uh, for me. It's select and place tool. It's in here. Okay. The shortcut for this is Y from uh, in the keyboard. You can just hit Y and it will be selected. It's just a tool, just like the move, rotate, scale, and uh, se uh, select object uh, tools. But this is uh, called select and place. And the shortcut is Y for this. And let's see what it does. Uh, what it does is, let's say we have something in here and we want to pull put this on the wall, for example. Uh, I want to unfreeze the wall first. Uh, I'm not really sure if it's going to work with freeze uh, frozen objects. Uh, and let's try that as well, by the way. I'm curious about that. But for now, let's just use a unfroze, an unfrozen uh, door wall. Now this is the box uh, I'm using. Now let's say we want to hang this on the wall in, in the entire scene. Uh, normally what you do is you go to the top view, 
you move this to the place, you rotate this 90 degrees, and then you move this up, and also go to the top view again to just place this where uh, it should be. Now th these are the normal uh, general uh, normal steps we take to hang something on the wall or put place something on a surface, let's say. Uh, but with select and place, let's undo all these steps. It's just lying on the floor there. Uh, with select and place, what you can do is let's just uh, isolate these two for you to see a little bit better. What you can do is you can just go to select and place, just drag, uh, click and get this and just move it around. And you can just see that it snaps to the wall instantly. It snaps to any surface, by the way. That's the uh, key of using this. If you uh, have a surface like this, you can just go ahead and put it in there. The only thing that you may want to change uh, could be the orientation. And you can do that easily by just hitting rotate and rotating this. Uh, but it could, uh, in, in this case, for example, it worked. So uh, let's hit Y again and place this. Uh, but, but as you can see, this time it, it didn't work. Uh, let's say we want to hang this landscape and you can just rotate it and place it. This saves me a lot of time and it uh, it doesn't only work on flat surfaces. Let me show uh, something more. Uh, let's say we want to place a, um, a screw on this uh, leg somewhere, okay? Uh, I will isolate that. By the way, to change the background color, you can hit Alt-B and use uh, custom gradients that will uh, help you get back to the max default background uh, colors. Uh, let's say we want to place a screw uh, on top of this uh, leg in here. I'm going to just create a sphere. Um, I, I'm going to go to edit poly, go to the front view and just delete all these, select the bottom face and cap it and maybe scale this down a little bit. Okay, let's say this is a screw head and I wanna just hit Y, hold this and place it wherever I want. It's a little bit big, so I'm going to scale it down. But you can see that it's very easy to place it anywhere uh, in the scene. And also you, what you can do is, all, like all the other transforms, you can hold Shift and click and drag, then uh, it will create a copy of that as well, okay? You can see that we have two of these now. Uh, you, you can see that it's very, very quick uh, way to place objects on uh, surfaces. Otherwise, this would be a tedious uh, task, but with this method, it's really easy to do. Okay, thanks for listening. I hope this was useful. If you find it useful, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the notification bell next to the subscribe button. Uh, again, thanks for listening. See you in the next lesson.